This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. IT in the D, networking Detroit, one beer at a time. IT in the D.com. And welcome back to an exciting remote edition of the IT in the D show. We are hanging out in Fantastic Con in beautiful Mount Clements, Michigan. This is Bob the Sales Guy hanging out with Dave the Geek and a very, very special guest. We got Theo Crane in the house, better known to you and me. He's Big Tiny from the AMC's The Walking Dead. Theo, appreciate spending time with us. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Good, good. Good, guys. Good, good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Had fun with you last night. Went to a, went to a bar called Dick Weeds. Went from double D's to Dick Weeds. <laughs> and, the, and definitely, I think Dave's highlight and my highlight of the night was... Uh, you singing uh, Rocky Horror. Sweet Transvestite. Oh, my yeah. goodness. We, uh, I think, Dave, didn't you take some video of that last night? Um, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> that, that may or may not exist. <laughs> I like, All depends on how well this interview goes. Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair right. enough. <laughs> so, I mean, we were at breakfast this morning. We heard a bunch of people going, oh, my God, you know who that was? And taking pictures with you. Does that ever stop, or is it just uh, nonstop? It, it only happens at conventions. Okay. Like, yeah, nobody, no, nobody's like picking me up on the street or anything. And that only happened honestly because um, we ran into those ladies last night when we got back from the Dick Weeds, and, <laughs> and we were just hanging out and talking and stuff. And they and, and it's fine. Oh, oh. Yeah, these are the condensers. They're good. Oh, okay. We were just hanging out and talking, and uh, my buddy was was telling him like, oh, you know, he was on the show, whatever. I don't really bring it up. It's not, you know, right. Unless I'm at the table with pictures of it, like. Why? You know, but um, they were they were intrigued by it, and so they started looking me up, and I got a message at like two in the morning on Facebook, like, yeah, we're the ladies next, because they were actually next door to me. Oh my god, like, we're the ladies next door, just saying hi, nice to meet you, and uh, we gotta look you up. And uh, this morning they did, they did, so that was fun. Right, right. Oh yeah, I mean, it was a, it, it was an interesting thing to to watch happen in the couple different bars that we went to. They were like. And I was like, you know, dude, the first people were angry that like this large crowd of strangers showed up, and then all of a sudden it was like, ooh, he's the Walking Dead guy. Can we be your best friends? Well, it, <laughs> it doesn't help that you're what six seven, six eight. Yeah, yeah you're so you're a big guy. Kind of stick out in the crowd, you know, like a sore thumb with fingernail polish. Right. <laughs> Well, what I thought was interesting is, so, you know, outside of the whole Walking Dead thing, you know, we got to talking about, like, so you're, like, really getting into, like, boxing and, and that sort of stuff. So, like, or, or you already are. I mean, yeah. like, so, like, what what are you trying to, like, are you trying to do that in addition to the acting thing, or is it? I always have, actually. Um, I learned, so I started out in judo when I was 13. I learned to box when I was 14. And I just picked up uh, things here and there. Um, about five years ago, I started kickboxing. And... Uh, that was with the coach that I have now, and we've just been doing it, man. Just uh, I, I, I basically uh, over the past seven or eight months, I just took it way more seriously. I started training harder, and uh, I changed my diet up, and, and, and cut out a bunch of stuff. I was gonna say when you look at pictures of you on the show, to now it's like night and day. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I was cheekier. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, but it's it's it's. I don't really have an end goal with it. It was just something I decided to do. I knew it was going to help with uh, with work because um, of the type of roles I want to do. I like uh, action stuff. I like being physical. Um, I started doing stunt work and uh, and actually started doing stunts in the roles that I would get as well. So it all just works together. And now um, the roles that I'm starting to get uh, looked at for are, are way different. Like a lot more boxers, a lot more you know uh, authoritative figures too, which is I find interesting. That's that's actually one thing that's really interesting. Like the way people address you, like from, from being a, a fatter guy to a not as fat guy. Um, yeah, please enlighten me. I want to know. <laughs> it's, it's weird, man. It's like, especially people that have known you for a while. Like my best friend was pissed at me at first because because he's a fat guy too. Like right. We were, we were commiserating on fatness for you know, but um, we because you know he. he he actually uh, does IT as well. He works for AT and T. Oh, okay. And um, so I'll talk to him while he's out running jobs and stuff. And I'll be. I, I, I remember when I was first like really getting into it. Um, and I was well first thinking about it. I would bring like a jump rope to a con or whatever, and I'd be talking to him on the phone, jumping rope. Like, are you seriously talking on the phone, jumping rope at the same time? I it'd be little things like that. And uh, I started uh, just for my own accountability. I started posting uh, selfies after a workout. 
Um, well, if you don't do that, it doesn't count. You well, know? It, well, <laughs> kind of, kind of, like, right? Because people started noticing, and they would post their own. They would, you know, look at what I was doing. I look what they're doing, and I thought that was awesome. And um, like, they would get progressively, you know, better as, 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 as the workouts got better. Because right. like. Um, I increased my intensity over the summer, and like that's when it really started kicking in. Plus, it's hot as hell in New Orleans, so oh, yeah. that that helps as well. And so, you know, people started to see it, and then, especially when the chains got really dramatic, like the midsection area. You know, uh, of course, there's a little bit more attention from you know opposite sex or whatever, but is like people, I guess, people trust you more. It's it's weird. People trust you more when you're when you're in shape. Well, we just had a, I just had one of my best friends lose 120 pounds. Yeah. And there was a picture last night, and he's got a pompadour haircut. He shaved his goatee. Oh, pompadour. And, oh, and he shaved his goatee, and he's wearing, like, a scarf. And I'm like, what do you do to my friend? Like, See, no, I wouldn't trust that guy. <laughs> I wouldn't trust that guy at all. <laughs> well, no, I, we're, we're all proud of him, right? I mean, are you what, you lose, what, about 50 or more than that? I lost I lost about 130. So, oh, my yeah, God. From uh, From... That's well, huge. Congrats. But that's over, that's well, over five years. Well, yeah. I mean, you, but you, I mean, you look at. I mean, even the promo picture that you've got next to your booth. Seek here. You're, <laughs> you're not half the man you used to be. <laughs> basically, basically. And I mean, the, the thing is, I just wanted to be healthy. I realized that um, I'm a big guy. I'm in my thirties. Um, I'm starting to run the risk of things. Um, I actually started getting checked up and stuff once I got in better shape. And I found out I was pre-diabetic. Uh, I was right on the edge, you know, and, and that's scary. It would have been scary had I not already started doing the work. Right. You know, and so it's, really I want to live longer. I want to be happier and healthier. And uh, that's that's what it boils down to. Like, I, I wasn't in it to lose a bunch of weight. I was just in it to, to feel better. Yeah, yeah. You know, to just to operate better. No, it's inspirational. Like I said, I'm, I'm coming from that side of the fence, too, where I was, uh, I was a jock in college. Got a desk job, yeah. and I like beer, and this is what happens, right? You know the funny thing about it? I was never, like, in high school and college, uh, I was never in shape. I was always, I've always been fat. Since I was, I remember in third grade, I weighed 180 pounds. Oh, my, in third grade? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. But I was, I mean, I was, because I, so, by sixth grade, I hit my first growth spurt. I was six foot tall, um, and that that explained a lot of things to a lot of people. Like, oh, that's why he's so right, right. But, um, <laughs> but you know, it was it was always it was never really like I was never jock really. I was athletic, but I was never like in shape. Yeah, yeah. And and part of me always wondered what that felt like too, to just be able to like to 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 run a lap and not hate yourself. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> Um, and so it was little goals. Like, I, I ran a mile for the first time. Um, I only did it once, though. So. <laughs> no, I was never, I always, even though I played basketball, soccer, I hated long distance running. It was, yeah. like, oh my God, it was the worst thing in the world. That's actually why I never played basketball. That, right. I, that running is not for me. <laughs> even now, I do not run. It's just not, it's not a fun thing for a tall dude. Oh, no, no. But. You're about rough on the knees. So changing gears a little bit. Yeah. Do you get a chance to check out Detroit at all? Uh, other than Dick Weezy and Double D's, no. <laughs> well, but you know more what do you need? Right. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That was if that's a that's a fair representation of of, of of where we are. Then I'm happy with it. That's East Side. That was uh, yeah. That was a couple towny bars. That was uh, yeah. That's it's not so like hey guys coming in from out of town. Let's take them over to Dick Weeds. But you know what? When I come when I come to a city I've never been to, that's kind of where I want to go. Right. I don't want to see. Your fancy restaurants and your, your bar. I want to see where you hang out, like where you go and just cut cut loose. Because that's what I do when I'm at home. Yeah. When I'm in New Orleans, I don't go to Dickie Brennan's restaurant and eat with my pinky out. You know, I go to I go to a karaoke bar. Well, it's a it's it's a gay bar in the daytime and a karaoke bar at night. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I go to I go to places where sometimes I go to I go to places where they they you leave and they're still drinking. Right. Like four or five in the morning. You know. Well, I think those kind of bars, and especially where like where we went last night, they appreciate when you show up with twenty people. Right, right. The bigger places, it's almost like it's a it's a burden, or you exactly. Know. We have to put tables out. Right. Oh my god, the tablecloths don't match. <laughs> right. We were we were lucky to find tables that were the same height. Oh yeah, and that was beautiful to me. You know, no, it's a, it's definitely a good town, good people, 
Um, well, and the you know, the waitress at double at the double D's was like, oh, she's like, how many people get it? I'm like, oh, like eight ten. She's like, oh, we'll pull these couple tables together for you. She's like, are you gonna have more? I'm like, I don't know. She's like, well, I'll give you one more table just to be safe. And then they 30. wound up pulling o- over two more tables, and then yeah, people another kept showing section. up. And like, <laughs> we had two islands of tables from the convention. We did, yeah. yeah. And that's, I mean, but that's what it's about, you know. And and I'm sure. They can use the business. Well, so like, is that, like, I guess that's a question. I mean, is that common? Like, is like, is there a Bob and Dave at every con that you go to that, like, hey man, you know what? Let's go out. Let's have fun. Let, you know, we'll, we'll go play. If there isn't, I'm thoroughly disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, because I, you know, this is like conventions are fun and like the the acting stuff. That's what I do for a living, and that's fun. And I'm I'm grateful that. You know, people appreciate what I've done and, and, and get a little notoriety from it. But at the end of the day, man, I'm just trying to have a good time. Oh, yeah. You know? That's, That's what it's about. Life is short, like you said earlier. You yeah. Know? If you can't have fun, then why are you doing it? Yeah. So what's the dumbest question you got so far? Have you gotten one? I don't I don't consider any of them dumb. <laughs> you know, I try not to think of it that way. I, I've gotten some random questions. I can't remember any right now, but I've gotten some pretty random questions. Um I'm actually looking for the Swedish fish now. They're all gone. Oh, yeah, they're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> so acting-wise, what other, uh, any projects coming up? Anything you want to uh, yeah. anything you um, call out? So the main thing that I'm, I'm most excited about is this project called Underground. It's going to be on WGN America. Um, it airs at the beginning of next year. We don't have it at air date yet. Um, probably January or February. But um, it's that is the thing that I'm the most proud of. I spent basically the entirety of a summer shooting um, from and and I've never I've never worked harder on a project. Like it, it took it took more than I thought I had to give. And when when I finished with it, I was I was thoroughly I was I very rarely like the things that I do at the end of it. Like I'm very rarely satisfied. Like okay, there's nothing else that I could do to make that any better. There's there is nothing else in that project that I can do to make it any better and I'm so excited for people to see it um, it's so what a, is it it's, so it's about um, slaves on a plantation okay they're escaping to the underground railroad so from from beginning from the beginning and, and it's not it's, it's not like roots it's not like um, just you know slaves walking around like right. this is action there is it's it's about the escape it's about running it's about you know the, the intense drama of it all in the in the, in the the relationship between the people that are involved, you know, it tells the the because there's there's even you know on the other side of it, the slave owners or anything, there's they're human beings still, sure. you know, there's humanity to it, and they still have their own things that they go through, and so they uh, they did a really good job of, of telling that side of the story, and uh, and but telling the story in just a way that is, is more approachable with the, the day and age that we're in now, because we're we're about action now, we're about faster pace. You know, entertain me exactly, yeah. exactly. And this is a thoroughly entertaining uh, show. I have this is, and this is the first, uh, this is the first project I worked on that I, that did a lot of stunts and a lot of acting. Um, I have a fight scene every episode that I'm in. No kidding. Yeah, and they you're get doing pro- your own. Yes. Okay. Yes, and they get progressively better. Um, the the last one that we filmed, I'm not going to give anything away, but when you see it, you're gonna. Can I, going to shit bricks <laughs> like it's because when i finished doing it i i just i left it all on the field man right 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 <laughs> i left it all on the field and i i i if i could go back and do it i probably wouldn't because it's exhausting but yeah yeah um, so it's called the underground it's called underground on wgn on wgn okay. and then um after that i got uh picked up for a project called here comes rusty uh, starring Fred Willard and Joey Lauren Adams from Chasing okay. Amy. Um, yeah, we met her last year. Joey Lauren Adams. Yeah, yeah she's, like she's fantastic. She's fantastic. <laughs> As, it's, the thing is, she looks the same. She, I mean, she, oh, yeah. She's only, like, she looks like she aged a couple years and not. <laughs> not, yeah, no. She looks bad, dude, in that voice. Yeah. Dude, we. Right, we met her at Comic Con like what two years ago last yeah, year. Yeah, the only time in your life you've ever seen the two of us completely freaking speechless. Like we we turned, we were like you did you did you join nor that you did you with the chasing him and the bit and the mulra marry me right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and she is great. Um, and it's a it's a really funny project. It's, it's going to be um, excuse me, going to be showing at South by Southwest. Okay, and uh, they're actually screening it um, for for everybody that was in it in Mobile. It was filmed in Mobile, Alabama. Cool. It was based in Mobile, Alabama at a dog track, 
and uh, they're going to be screening it for everybody that's in it uh, Tuesday. So I'll get to tell you like if it worked or not. But, right, right. <laughs> it's a lot of fun making it. Fred Willard, um, he's getting up in age, man, but he still got it. That dude is hilarious. You know who killed us? Uh, just on a related uh, uh, airplane, Robert Hayes. Yeah, you know, older guy, dude, Ken Stryker. Yeah, and sat there and like I would imagine just, like just sat there and riffed for like twenty minutes. I'm like, I, I, my God, I hope when I'm that I, I still have my faculties that I'm still that sharp. Absolutely, and that's the thing too, man. I, I'm I'm getting to a point where I'm starting to work with the the kind of people that the people that I've seen growing up, you know, right? Um, I I've always. I watched Fred Willard. I've never, I never knew his name until I worked with him. He was really, the, he was just the just guy. that guy yeah, that's he, in that thing that I love. That, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the funniest dude in the movie. But, and 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 just being able to just take a little bit of that in, you know, is, is an education. I, um, what was he originally? Dave, the the was Sarah Purcell. Wasn't that Fred Willard part of? Uh, he was no. He was uh, WKRP in Cincinnati. Right. Uh, he was. Wait, wait, wait. Am I thinking of the right guy? No, no. he wasn't Les Nesman. No, no, no! I'm not thinking of Les Nesman. Wasn't he uh, Herb? Herb? He, no, I don't think so. Everybody's pulling. No, phone yeah, out. no. Everybody get your phone yeah, out. No, that's that's exactly who I was thinking. Are of. you sure? That's funny. Wow! Even more things that I didn't remember. Yeah, he was a he was a game show host for the law. He was indeed did best in show. He's yep. done a whole bunch of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, and 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 just uh, and then I worked on another project uh, actually two days ago. Um, called uh, Camera Store, and John Larroquette was starring in that from Night Court. Oh, uh, nice! That dude is magical. Like I, I only work. See, I just want. I'd want to sit down and talk with him about Blind Date. Still one of my favorite movies. Stripes, the Stripes. Oh yeah, Stripes. Yeah. Oh boy! Oh, oh, Ow! Feedback for that. Well, yeah. okay. That wasn't us. <laughs> Too early for that. We didn't do it. So I guess actually, here's a good question. Speaking of Joey Lauren Adams, this is one of the one of the. I am, I'm so surprised she didn't leap off the stage and kill people. Like, so are people coming over to you and asking you questions like, "Hey, so what's it like to work with?" Oh, like, the worst. I do get that. Did her entire panel discussion? That's all people did. Are you serious? They were like, "Hey, so what's it like to work with Kevin Smith? What's it like to work with Ben Affleck? What's it like?" <laughs> Awful. It's, it's weird because, in a way. Like on the, on the one hand, yeah, it kind of sucks because it feels like they're not there to see you; they're there to ask about the people you work with. Yeah. But on the other hand, I mean, you did get to work with those people, which means that you 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 done at least the the kind of work that garners that that right. level of appreciation. Like they will put you in the same category or the same stage with them. So I, I try to look at, it, I try to put a positive spin on it. Right. Like, you know, I mean, especially with Walking Dead, like. What's it like to work with everybody you work with? Yeah, you know? yeah, you know, I guess that's true. I mean, it's it's yeah, not Herschel's like, legs really get cut off, right? Right. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's like that. I guess that's the thing. I mean, it's not like there were any huge stars in it to begin with. Like, I mean, right. the show, you know, the show's taken off immensely, and everybody, you know, there's been everybody gained a lot of popularity, but it's not like from the get go there was like the name, right? Right. There was, I mean, how many twelve people at Motor City Comic Con from Walking Dead? And you would have thought that every one of them was like the Pope and the President. I mean, the lines were insane. I mean, it's oh, like except for except for Carl, nobody liked him. Yeah, yeah exactly. really. Yeah. Well, he, was, he was a little. Apparently, jerk. apparently, he, had, he apparently had a little bit of an attitude with everybody that he talked to. Well, I mean, but when you're a kid and you, puberty, you I was gonna say when you're a kid yeah. and you get thrown into that, yeah. You know, actually, and who I felt bad for was I completely forget her name. Uh, the uh, Oldest, uh, the lo- the long blonde haired girls uh, that died at the end of the the last season. Like, oh. Look at the flowers, all that stuff. Yeah, she looked so uncomfortable and overwhelmed to be at. And like, and apparently that was her first con last year. Um, and she just looked so uncomfortable and overwhelmed. It's, and that's got to be hard because you are. I mean, you're still a teenager, yep. and and yep. people like everybody wants. I want a piece. I want a piece. I want a piece. I want a piece. I mean, first, <laughs> first, their eyes are on you. Yeah, they're looking at you from every angle. And that's a, I mean, as an adult, and, that's a tough thing to do. And waiting to sell something to TMZ. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Just waiting to see you do something. Ah, uh, Theo picked his nose. You right. Know, right. That's one thing you can never, you don't ever have to worry about. I have such an aversion to boogers. <laughs> I don't know, like, since I was a child, man, like, boogers are just, I, I, yeah, anyway. Own it. No, it's my take. Own it. Yeah, yeah. Like, someone, like someone told me, they're like, I saw you driving down the street the other day. You were totally picking your nose. I'm like, Yeah. 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 And, <laughs> yeah. and did I get one? Or <laughs> exactly. Were you impressed? Right, right. <laughs> Were you entertained? <laughs> yeah. 
But no, man. It's, but this is honestly, um, I feel for them, but I think they're going to make the adjustment. You know, it's it's they're they're kids, but they're good kids. Yeah. You know, I've, I've gotten to, to hang out with a couple of them. I've actually gotten to um, to, to do a couple cons with uh, with Carl, and I don't know. I can't forget his. I can't remember his real name right now. Yeah. But yeah, um, he's he's not a bad kid. He's just. I mean, probably, it's got to be hard. He'd probably rather be on a date than being at a con right there, right. or sitting yeah. somewhere like with a you know an Xbox One or yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, if you're really if you're being really honest about it, he is a teenager at that point. He's probably hiding a boner the entire time, <laughs> like, just sitting awkwardly behind the table. Exactly. Look I at mean, that. Look at that pretty girl. Look at that pretty girl. Exactly. Look at that pretty girl. Look at that pretty girl. Look at that pretty scantily clad, right. much, you know. Yeah. So you know he's probably just uncomfortable or whatever. All those poison ivies walking around. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, it, it is difficult to deal with in, yeah. in, in any capacity as a dude. Straight right. dude. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, hey, man, if, uh, if you do wind up hanging out, let me know. Uh, I, I've still got uh, somebody working on uh, the key to Kronks, so if you wind up hanging out for another night, let me know. It'll be a lot easier to hook up. All right. All right. I will look into that. That is that is actually very exciting. That's one thing, I, as far as being in Detroit, I, I really wanted to check out some boxing gyms because that is, I mean, that's the thing, man. That's, yeah. That is the thing here. and that's I'm a, I love boxing history. You know, I love. It's a um, good town for it. Exactly. Exactly. I didn't know this, but New Orleans is, too. But it's more on the amateur side, you know. Yeah. But yeah, um, it's 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 like. Well, yeah, we got arenas named after Joe Lewis. <laughs> right, right. It's like all your, your crazy uncles that you, you hear these stories about from your parents. Yeah. And then you get to meet them, and you see the scars, and you you know that's kind of how it feels for me. You know. So. Yeah. Tommy Hearns still every every Pistons game. He's like yeah. you know he's very active in the community. Oh my god! It would a wet dream. It would be a wet dream of mine to meet Tommy Hearns. Just <laughs> ah. Anyway, yeah. Well, good. Uh, hey, Theo, honestly, it was fun hanging out with you last night. Appreciate the time you spent with us today. Look forward to seeing the future work. Yeah, we want to take up your whole day, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, we do, but we won't. <laughs> <laughs> we just stayed here because we got candy. I got, the feeling, I got the feeling there'll be plenty of time for all this later. Absolutely. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, if I can get one more night with that dude, if you're hang- Dude, if you're hanging, uh, you're coming to wrestling with us, and, and then we'll head downtown and find the gyms. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> it's a wrestling event tonight. Yeah, you got to come with. Who's, like, what, what do you, what's the uh, organization here? XICW. X I C. You know who Rhino is? Like, yeah, he, Rhino's That's, the star. He's one of our guys. Okay, cool. yeah. He's local guy. So actually, um, at the boxing gym that I train at, they have uh, they have wrestling uh, uh, wrestlers who train there. Ron Simmons um, and uh, Stevie Ray from the Harlem Heat. Right? Yeah, they're they're the, the the guys that come down there for that. Damn. Damn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A one word catch uh, just. Could you imagine? Well, I wanted to ask you that earlier. Is that, are you kind of happy you don't have a catchphrase? I am. I can just make one up. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, because otherwise, it's like no one cares until you say. You know, it's like the old Simpsons episode. No one cares about you. Just say, say the damn. Just, just say, say the phrase, kid. Yeah. That's right. Who was it? Uh, I didn't know. Oh, Schneider. Oh, John Schneider. Last year's comedy dude, he was hilarious because you know we always get. Uh, I think that's what we had. We had to get a station ID. Um, and as uh, so we were like, hey, you know, he's like, well, what do you want me to say? We're like, oh, you know, just something, you know, Bo Duke, Duke's a hazard. You're listening to a couple good old boys. Yada yada yada. Um, and he was like, man, was that a mosquito? It might have been. What the fuck oh my is that about? God. Got him. Nice. Uh, That's like some New Orleans shit, man. Oh, yeah, it, that it, was it, huge. It, it was, it, that might carry away a small child. <laughs> so he, he turns and he looks at his at, at his banner. And he's like, man, do you see all the other shit that I've done? Like, why does everybody only care? I'm like, man, nobody's here to hear the new stuff. Just play the classics. <laughs> <laughs> so he did. So he grabs it and he's like, he's like, hey, this is John Schneider from. And he turns and reads the entire banner from Nip Tuck. No, no, no. Like every show he's in, he's like, and oh, yeah, the Duke's ahead. <laughs> We get the same thing from Ralph Macchio. We don't uh, want to know about his karate kid, man. Just, no. Just, Do you remember the movie where he... It, this is the Benjamin Button before Benjamin Button. Crossroads. You know, cro- yes. That, yeah, I do exactly where you're oh going. I love God. that movie. Have you seen that? Yeah. Ah, uh, That's what I care about, man. even though... Ah, uh, <laughs> Representing Mr. Miyagi. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, so... Ralph Macchio's is old. Want to want to drop a bomb? Ralph Macchio's is old right now as Mr. Miyagi was when yeah. they filmed Karate Kid. Yeah, and so is Will Smith as old as Uncle Phil. 
Like that, yeah. There's some crazy uh, times going by. We're too all, fast. We're all getting old. I know. You know what <laughs> I want to see? I want to see Will Smith with the Uncle Phil cul de sac. Ah, that would be. Now, now he's gonna get a hair transplant before that happens. Yeah, he's like, did you see that he's going on tour with Jazz Jeff? No, they're Are you they're serious? they're doing a tour next year. No, I'll they're be there. Yeah. I'll oh be there. hell yeah. Yeah. Well, there was uh, last weekend. Belbiff DeVoe and Color Me Bad performed at the casino. I'm like, oh, we gotta go to that. Like, it was a day before Halloween though. We got kids. It's like, that's like that's about as that's about as I don't know if it's appalling or surprising, but like when boys boys to men. New Kids on the Block, yeah. 98 Degrees, and I remember that tour, yep. Yeah, that was ridiculous. There was only like two boys left to men. Right. <laughs> well, and the guy from Color Me Bad looks like he ate the other one. You know, like, <laughs> oh my God, yeah, they just did a, a promo on TV, and I'm like, oh my God, that dude, look, he's like my size. And he was like the pretty boy, pencil thin mustache, you know, that one. Oh, God. Oh, he's, yeah, he's three bills at least. That makes me happy. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that makes me happy. Right. I wanna say you up. Oh yeah. Nom nom, you don't stop. Nom nom nom, you don't stop. Nom nom. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I, I think we should make that. It, I, I wanna, I wanna parody. Yeah. I yeah, wanna yeah. eat you up. Yep. Nom yep. nom, you don't stop. Yeah, that needs Just to be a donuts thing. all night. Oh god. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, can you play the classic do me for the kids, hon? You know, with all- exactly. We're gonna be the first generation of the old folks home listening to the Two Life Crew. Oh, I know. <laughs> totally. Uh, you know, Music's gotten so much nicer since then. It was so, I mean, it was brash as hell. <laughs> we were listening to like classic rock wait. yesterday. And it was like slide it in. Wait, Don't have you like- heard what's going on the radio now? Oh, it's awful. Yeah, this, this, yeah. This here's, is, a, here's a song your kids are gonna love and like to sing all the time. It's 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 about suck a dick. It blow my whistle, baby. I'm like, oh my dude. The first time I was in my car and like my daughter started. Like, I got an eight year old and she was like, she's like, oh, I like this song. I'm like, the hell you no, do. No, 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 no. <laughs> exactly. But I did think about that. Like, what we're gonna be listening to in the old folks' home, like. It, it's not gonna be like ballads anymore. It's 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 baby got back. Public yep. Enemy. Yeah. Pu- oh my it's god. P E K R S one. I still know like Easy E lyrics, and it's like, I you know, I, 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 that's why I can't learn anything new. I can still, you know, <laughs> rolling down the street in my six. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. God. Jacking the bitches. I can do this all day. That's why like. Bob, Wait. learn a new uh, technology. No, oh, no, no. I, I, I got two Bismarck key lyrics. Sorry. Right, right. <laughs> Rolling down the hallway in your wheelchair. Yeah, exactly. Rolling down the street in my six Shocking the grannies. <laughs> God. Scope of the nurses. I, I can't wait to get old. I can't wait to get old now. Just to see that. I'm I gonna, just want to tell my grandkids I'm going upstairs to bang their grandma. Like, just to see the look on her face. Yep. Like, to me, that would be worth being a grandfather. Because the Viagra they're going to have in 20 years is not the Viagra we have now. I oh, no, it'll be like an inhaler. Like, just smell it. Like, it'll be a mister. Know. It'll right. be permanent. <laughs> <laughs> Push a button. But, hey, um, we're going to wrap things up. Um, Theo, uh, seriously, appreciate the time. Awesome hanging out with you. Thank you. Um, look forward to uh, seeing your future. Thanks again right. for hanging out. Um, and my sugar, it's funny, my sugar rush kicked in halfway through, so concentrating got really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I felt my eyes trying to cross. Right, right. But I'm still going to keep doing this. Awesome. <laughs> Always stop by. Oh, yeah. God, don't hey, do this is IT in the D show, and uh, we'll see you in, uh, in a few. IT in the D. Networking Detroit. One beer at a time. IT in the D dot com. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show.